Hey everybody, my name is John McCoy. I'm the production manager here at G&D Chillers. We're going to run through a few steps today to get your chiller started up. It shows up from the factory created for protection during shipping. Before you accept delivery of your new unit, please make sure you carefully inspect every aspect of the unit. I can't stress that enough to you guys. We want to make sure you're getting the, the highest quality product and nothing happened to it during shipping. You can go ahead and accept delivery, uncrate the unit, and we'll move on to chiller positioning. When it's time to position your chiller, typically that's done on a concrete pad or a form of some sort to get it up off the ground to keep grass and debris from growing around the unit. The louvered access panels in the front need to be open to free air at all times and you need at least 24 inches of clearance on the air intake side which is on the back of the chiller. When it's time to make your piping connections to the chiller, it's very important, highly recommended by G&D Chillers that you guys install a Y strainer. It's important because we don't want any particles, shavings, PVC glue from your mainline piping coming back to the chiller. So this catches all those particles when it's time to actually make your connections and turn the chiller on. It needs to be installed at the chiller on the return line. When it's time to get power pulled to your unit, it needs to be done by a certified electrician. An external disconnect needs to be mounted to the chiller at some point on a wall, on a post nearby your electrician can help you out with that. Once you verify that you've got power to your unit, it's important to check and reset all of the breakers to make sure nothing was tripped during shipping or anything like that. It's a good idea just to reset all of them. Flip them down, flip them right back up just to make sure that they're all engaged properly. On our three phase units, they have a different style of breaker. Turn it to the left, turn it right back up so the black knob's in a vertical position. It's important to leave power to the chiller for at least four hours before firing up any of the compressors. The crankcase heater is then engaged and allows the compressor to fire up free of any liquid refrigerant that may have condensed inside. Okay, so at this point you've got the chiller positioned where you need it, checked all your clearances on your concrete pad, you got power pulled to it, you guys are ready to start filling and flushing the reservoir, which is what I'm going to show you how to do next. At this point we need to take the panels off, that's the first step. All right, so now that we've got the louvered access panels off, it's time to fill up the reservoir located here with water. There's a sight glass right here so you can see the level. Access to the reservoir is on the back left corner of your unit. Take the cap off, throw a garden hose in there and get it filled up with water. And then we're going to turn the pump on, start pushing the water through the system so the strainer can catch any contaminants in the piping. All right, so at this point, you've got your glycol reservoir completely full with just water. That way we can start pushing that stuff out help flush your lines. Way to turn the pump on at this point, turn the door switch to the run position. That engages the pump. Now it's time to verify glycol pressure as well as pump rotation. With the pump running, you want to make sure your valve valves are closed and verify the pressure on the system. It should be at 20 PSI as our factory setting via the bypass valve that is installed on the unit. If your pump is spinning backwards, you're going to see a lower pressure on your pressure gauge as well as it's not going to sound very good. A certified electrician can make sure the pump is spinning the right way for you. Once you verify that you've got proper pressure and proper rotation of your pump, it's time to open up the supply ball valve and start sending that water out through your system. Make sure that the return ball valve stays closed. That doesn't let any of the water come back to the reservoir. It's going to purge it through the strainer and catch all the contaminants in the system. Okay, so as you're pushing all this water through the system, you want to make sure that you do it long enough to make sure we catch all of the contaminants coming back to the system. That means you may or may not have to fill that reservoir up a couple of more times until that water coming out of the purge valve on your strainer is clean and clear. Keep in mind that you need to have this return ball valve closed at all times while you're flushing your system. Once you're comfortable that all the contaminants have been flushed out of the system, that water is running clear out of your Y strainer purge valve, it's time to start draining the water. We do this by leaving the pump running as long as possible until all the water starts coming out of the purge valve. Then you go ahead and shut your pump off and it's time to start adding glycol. We use propylene glycol with inhibitors. That is a must in our systems. You want it to be at a 35% mixture. Getting glycol into the reservoir using a transfer pump of some kind to get it in there. You get the reservoir filled up about 10 inches below the top of the reservoir. Checking it with a refractometer. Glycol must be checked with a refractometer. A hydrometer will not work. Take a little bit of the glycol of your mixture, put it right here, close this down. It's time to take a peek through it and make sure that you've got a 35% mixture of 24.75 bricks. If you need a refractometer, G&D can supply these for you. 
Next thing you want to do is turn your pump on. Start pushing that glycol out through the system. There's going to be a little bit of residual water inside the, the jackets on your tanks, inside the pipes. That there's no way for us to drain that out. It's going to dilute your mixture a little bit, and as you start filling up those vessels and the pipes, you're going to notice that glycol level drop down in your reservoir, which is a good thing. Now, you want to make sure that your glycol level is about 10 inches below the top of the reservoir during normal operating circumstances. Now that we've got the correct glycol mixture in the system, you've got your pipes and jackets full of glycol. At this point, we want to make sure that the door switch is in the off position, and we'll go ahead and open up the service valves on the unit so we can bring the compressors online. New chillers ship with three valves closed per circuit. The compressor suction valve, the receiver liquid line valve, and the compressor discharge valve. For all 2019 and newer models, the compressor discharge valve will be closed prior to shipment and this valve will need special treatment. To proceed, fully open the suction valve and the liquid line valve. For the discharge valve, fully open valve, then turn valve stem back in one half to one full rotation. Verify these valve positions before proceeding to the next step. Now that your valves are open, it's time to turn the door switch to the run position and adjust the thermostat. Now that those valves are open, it's going to allow the compressors to come on, assuming that the thermostat is calling for cooling. It's okay if that happens, we're going to get it adjusted right where you need it. Thermostats lit up, they come factory set at 55 degrees, with a differential of 3 and 4 respectively per stage. A single stage unit is going to come set at 55 degrees with a differential of 3. The way to adjust these is fairly simple. Press the set button, it's going to bring up 55 degrees, which is our set point for stage 1. You can run that down whatever your desired temp is. Say today I want to run my glycol at 40 degrees. Hold the down arrow until you reach your desired temperature. And there's 40 degrees. When I hit the set button, it's going to call a compressor on for cooling and take me to the set point for, for set point two, stage two. So we'll hear that compressor in just a second. And there she runs, she's fired up. I think we'll leave set point two at 55 for now. That sounds good. You hit the set button again. It takes you back to the home screen where it displays your current glycol temperature. Now it's time to adjust the thermal protection or temperature protection installed on the unit. We have a freeze stat, which is S1. That's low temperature protection to prevent any freezing that may occur in the unit. There's also set point two, which is our high temp shutoff to prevent any kind of malfunction which would produce high temperatures in the system. This will keep that from happening. So when it's time to adjust set point two as discussed, press the set button one time, brings up F. That's Fahrenheit unit of measure for our temperature. It can be changed to Celsius if desired. Press the set button again, it brings up 10 degrees. That's for set point one, S1 flashing here indicates that. We need to leave that there. That's our factory set point for our low temperature protection. Right here it says diff one. That's a differential for set point one. That's also at 10 degrees. We want to leave that there as a factory setting. That's generally where everything should operate for those two set points. It says C1, that means it's in cooling mode. Also a factory set point. Don't need to touch that one at all. Set button again brings you to S2, which is set point two. We need to make that one drop down to 60 or 65, right in there. 60 degrees is perfect for set point two. Press the set button. At a five degree differential, it says diff two down here. Wanna leave that one there, that one works just fine. Set button again, says H2, that means it's in heating mode, that's where we want it to be. That's perfectly normal. It's gonna auto reset after it reaches its five degree differential and try and fire back up for you. Set button again, you're back at the home screen and you've just adjusted set point two. All right, so by now, hopefully your chiller's running smoothly and everything should be operating correctly. We're committed to cold and the service we provide for you guys. We're here around the clock to ensure you get anything you need, day or night. Please don't hesitate to give us a call if the need arises.